Hey everyone, Shadow here, and welcome to another Marvel Contest of Champions video. So, Kabam previously released a prelude to the roadmap. Uh, that's what was leaked earlier, and it did not contain a lot of details. Well, now we have more details as to what they are planning in this first phase of their roadmap. All right, so in this video, we're going to go over the highlights. But what you're looking at here, and I'm not going to read this to you, uh, but I wanted to put it on screen. I wanted to scroll through it so that if you want, you can read this for yourself. This is the document that I was working with. This is what they released to us in a PDF form. Uh, on the content creator program server. So you have everything that we were given. What I did was I went through this entire document and I pulled out all of the highlights that it contained. So it should be a little bit easier. And then I created some slides uh, for some talking points and we are gonna go through each of those uh, but what this document contains, if you decide to read it, uh, they talk about, you know, their thinking, okay, why they chose to do what they did. Uh, there was a section on compensation and rewards, and they try to be a little bit more transparent as to their rationale. Uh, why do they nerf some rewards in order to buff other rewards? You know, why do they not compensate uh, end game players when they update the rewards for content that they've already cleared. They talk about that in this document, but this document contains all the details of this first part. And as you can see at the end here, they say, join us on Thursday as we take a deep dive into the future of alliances. So, you're getting sort of a preview, and if you join them on Thursday, uh, they should go a little bit more uh, in-depth as to their plans, because some of these, I still don't know exactly what they're planning, all right? So let's switch over to my slides. Uh, all right, so here are my slides. We're going to go through each one of these and we're going to talk about the highlights of what Kabam is planning. Uh, and if you want to know more behind the scenes, their thought process, that's why I went ahead and uh, scrolled through that document. All right, so it's uh, titled Dev Diary, The Future of Quest, because that's what they are focusing on right now. All right, so the first thing up, as you can see, is back issues number five. And we also refer to that as variants, um, and that would be variant five, the latest iteration of the variants. Uh, it'll be called Blood and Venom. And they say they're going back to champion requirements. Now, anytime I hear going back, I get nervous because if they're going back to something that was not that pleasant, then it's not gonna be a good experience. Uh, but they're saying that they're going back to champion requirements. The requirements are going to be act wide and it's going to contain tag targeted buffs. Now, if you don't know what that is in some of the variants, you had certain champions that received extra buffs, you know, like um, we had Sentinel. He got special buffs. Uh, we had some that targeted uh, Venom. Uh, you had some that targeted those who could poison. So that's what they're going to be doing. You know, you'll have these buffs that target certain tags for a champion. All right. And if you ever look at a champion, you can see their tags like control, uh, mercenary, all of those tags. That's what they're talking about. So we don't know exactly what the targeted buffs uh, will look like, but they're letting us know that they're going to have more of those in there. That will allow us to bring in a variety of champions, perhaps uh, champions that you may not normally have used. So we'll see. Uh, this will be released in August. 
in their update 28. Uh, and they hinted, if you read the document, they hinted at variant six coming in 2020. They are making no promises, but it might be rolled out sometime between August and December. So that we will hold our breath and see what happens. All right, so now, Act 6 Champion Boss Update. This is why I say wait. If you have not explored it, wait. All right, damage from Nullify in, uh, Null Nullify, sorry, in the main event phase reduced from 10% to two. That's pretty significant. Block penetration is basically being cut in half, okay? That means he's gonna do a lot less damage. You're gonna be able to block him uh, without worry. If you watched my video, I did it with Captain America Infinity War because he has such high block proficiency. So he's still gonna be great for this. He's gonna be even better for this now. And on top of that, you're gonna be able to bring in other champions that don't have as high of a block proficiency and be able to do some of the same things. So this is opening up the possibilities for other champions to take this guy down. The dex requirements in the final phase, you know, the final 10%, are going from five to three. So that's gonna make it easier. I'm glad they didn't remove it completely because that's actually a nice skill-based uh, fight where you cannot spend your way through it. You've gotta practice and you've gotta get it down. But three, definitely much easier than five, but you still have to do it. And the last point is the pain point everyone talks about. Now, I've only done it once and I never had to deal with this because I listened to it and I said, wait a minute, you've got no retreat, which punishes you for dashing back. But then you made a champion that in the 10% you know, final phase, you have to dash back in order to take off those uh, invulnerabilities. I'm like, that just doesn't make any sense. You're being punished to do what they told you that you had to do to take this boss down. So they are actually removing it. I listened to a podcast from uh, Rich the Man and at the minimum, they were saying that should be one of the things that they nerfed, that they removed the no retreat. They would have been happy with just the no retreat being removed. Well, Kabam has done that. They've listened and they've done extra things as well. So Act 6 champion boss, going to be much easier. Okay? But still not easy. You still have to know how to dex. All right, now this is general act six someone asked me uh you know specifically if they're going to be doing 6.4 or three but the attack values for path champions that's the champions that you will encounter before you get to the boss all reduced by 40 to 60 percent okay that's across the board um the attack values for final bosses in 6.4 not including the grandmaster are going to be scaled down by 60 to 75 percent that is huge much less damage okay um they're going to revisit the pain point boss fights and path fights so basically this is letting you know that they're doing this but they're still going to be looking into what else they can do for these boss fights and path fights okay because there's certain uh encounters that even with the scaled down attack values are still very very annoying okay uh certain encounters that just don't have that many counters to it i'm looking at you sinister all right uh but some or all changes they are saying should be available before book two's launch okay that's act seven uh if you are not familiar with how they're doing it, but they're calling it book two. All right, so some or all. So don't expect everything, but if they can, they will. They want these things in before book two's launch. 
All right. Now, book two, chapter one. Path based rewards will be added. So um, I believe in the abyss. You get rewards as you complete the paths. OK, uh, they're saying that that is something that they're going to be implementing for book two. Uh, fights will be designed to reward optimal play rather than punish suboptimal play. So let me let me explain that a little bit. Uh, the way that they have been doing things is very negative. You don't get buffs when you play well. Instead, they only punish you when you mess up. OK, uh, they have certain ways that they might want you to fight, you know, whether it's um, intercepting, you know, they'll do things that punish you for not playing the way that they want you to play. Well, they're saying that they're not going to do it like that anymore. So let's see. That's a paradigm shift, you know, a different way of thinking. So let's see what they do with that. Uh, energy cost to complete one path will not exceed 70 energy. It is no kind of um, fun. Very annoying that you could not finish a path with full energy. Nothing that I can think of would be better if each path, you could at least finish it. I would love to see the uh, energy reduced even more, but... When you get to that path and you can't finish it on full energy, that is so unsatisfying. It's not even funny. So I'm happy to see that. Uh, the time required to complete a path is reduced. That's nice. I don't like long, drawn out quests or fights. So that's a good thing. RPG requirements for fights will be loosened to open up more avenues for counterplay. So what I understand for this, they have RPG you know, basically uh, pushing the storyline reasons that they design an encounter that only has a few counters to it. So it's not fun, but it fits in with their story. Well, they're saying they're going to not do that as much, at least, because they said it'll be loosened, not eliminated, just loosened so that you have more options, more flexibility. So I'm looking forward to that, all right? Uh, story quests will feature multiple final bosses. That I wanna see, that should be interesting. Champion swapping. All right, so if you are familiar with incursions, uh, you can swap champions in the middle of an incursion at need. So the fact that they're putting in champion swapping, that's a new mechanic, by the way. Uh, will allow you to be a little bit more flexible. You'll be able to go in, maybe uh, bring in a champion for a particular fight, but not be saddled with that champion for the entire rest of the quest. Or if you see someone that you know you're going to have to deal with, you can bring in one team to handle everything, and then you see that one, you swap out to the champion that does that particular encounter best. So that looks like it's going to be very interesting and, and allow for more strategy and flexibility. Uh, the number, length, and fights per path are decreased. Uh, so that's good. Fewer buffs on the majority of encounters with simpler buffs applied. We'll have to wait and see. A lot of these things don't mean anything to us because we didn't really uh, watch the beta. Uh, I didn't play with the beta a lot. So a lot of these are changes to what people saw from the beta so if you look uh, at some other videos you'll be able to see what it looked like most people did not like what act seven or book two chapter one looked like so these are the pain points that they're addressing all right path difficulty scaled from easy to hardest with clear signposting to help identify them so if you watch my videos of the story content one of the things that i aim to do is to show you what the easiest path is for your initial clear. And in general, you can look for the single star chest, uh, but not always. So they're saying that they're going to increase the or make it clearer 
which path is the easy path. So that'll make my job a little bit easier. Um, almost, uh, you won't even need me to identify the easy path. So maybe I'll have to do something else, but I don't mind. I like that change. All right. Uh, Final Boss is designed as standalone experiences, relying less on niche RPG counters and hard skill requirements. I want to wait and see what that looks like. Okay. Uh, but they're basically talking about a difference in design for the final bosses uh, from what they normally do. You know, they have a very strong RPG style design counters. Uh, a lot of times that's not fun for us because it limits our choices. So this seems to be opening it up so that we have more choices. Multiple final bosses per quest allow for a scaling difficulty and variety of challenges to keep quest fresh for replays. So I want to see what that looks like, but they're basically saying that by having multiple final bosses, it opens up the opportunity for them to design things a little bit better and more flexible with more variety and to even have sort of a scaling difficulty so you can go in at one difficulty, finish it, get your rewards, but then go back again and do it and it would be maybe a different boss with a different uh, difficulty. It's going to be interesting. I want to see what that looks like. Uh, the projected release date is December 2020. Okay, so that's this December. All right. Now, Cavalier difficulty. People have been asking for this for a long time. Uh, the release date is September 2nd. But if you think that is going to be quite a long while to wait, they have something for you in the meantime. So as you see there, you're going to have these Canadian difficulty side quests in July. There's going to be two of them, I believe. And then you're going to have legendary difficulty side quest in August. So we're not going to be left thirsty. We're going to be able to get a little taste in July and in August. Okay, so you got that to look forward to. Now, this one, Beyond the Quest, I'm not as thrilled with this because I don't play with the music on. Uh, when I do live streams, you guys hear the gameplay and everything because I turn it on. But normally, when I'm playing, no sound. And what I don't see in here, and maybe I missed it, are changes to Howard the Duck sounds. He's the main reason that I turned off the sound uh, in the first place, not because the music was so horrible, but because him. All right. But they have a battle music update. We don't know what it sounds like. Boss music update. Again, don't know what it sounds like. Quest exploration. So when you explore the quest, apparently you're going to get a different track after you've explored it. So that's interesting. If you like the music, uh, when you are doing your champion selection, they're going to have a track that um will be new i guess a new background track track uh for when you're selecting your champions again it doesn't seem that doesn't really excite me but it may excite some other people and maybe it will add a little ambiance you know uh and then there's new graphics uh in for uh book two all right and then finally we've got boss rush and more now, you guys might be familiar with the Boss Rush challenges. Um, if you're not, just do a search for Boss Rush in, uh, in YouTube, and you will find plenty of videos on the previous Boss Rushes. But you've got something called the Summoner Smackdown. All right, new spin on the Boss Rush. We're going to wait and see what that looks like. You can look at the document. They do talk a little bit more about it. Uh, their thought process and everything. Uh, and then you got Summer of Pain, which they said is a working title. Uh, and it looks like it's going to be the next end game content. I don't know a whole lot about it, but that seems to be um, targeting those who have already finished Abyss. They finished Act 6 and they're looking for their next big challenge. All right. So 
that is going to do it, guys. That is all I have currently. Uh, this is a start. You know, it's more fleshed out, but this is not where they're stopping. If you remember the skeleton uh, prelude for the roadmap, it contained other sections, though we don't have details for those yet. But this is the details that we have so far. And I must say, it's looking pretty interesting. Now, in the prelude, uh, which I didn't make a video for, I'm really looking forward, and I know maybe a lot of people aren't, but that AI change to the uh, arena and the arena updates, you know, they say it's going to be less screens and everything. Currently, uh, I am free to play. Yep, I don't have the sigil. I'm not paying for anything. I'm actually free to play right now. Um, and... Where I get my resources is the arena. So I do the arena more than any other content in this game. So when I see updates to the arena, I get excited. Okay. So anything that makes the arena less of a chore is going to be exciting for me. Now, it's not going to make you want to do arena anymore if you don't like arena. But that AI is so frustrating, especially when you're going... Uh, to the infinite street if they just remove certain ai profiles from that arena that would go a long way but it looks like they're going to be doing even more i also heard they're doing a help all button uh, they had one before but it was not coded properly and how i know that is because when you would hit it and a lot of people were hitting it it brought down the server so they apparently have reworked it and have coded it properly so we're going to have a help all button, uh, which we'll have to see how that works. I would love to have them do a few other things like sort the uh, champions that have the help button down to the bottom so that I can complete my arena. And then at the very, very end, when I'm done, maybe I can hit help all. OK, uh, or uh, some other way to hit all of them but at least they'd be out of my way while i'm doing the arena and i wouldn't feel like i had to do it you know during in the middle of my arena that's so annoying uh but that's going to do it guys thank you all for watching click like subscribe leave a comment definitely leave a comment let me know what you think about these changes let me know if uh you have any concerns because i might mention them they may already have been mentioned on the server but i can mention uh, concerns uh, when I go uh, talk to them on their uh, Discord server. So take care and you all have a blessed day.